Welcome to Copentel, a podcast about Copenhagen and Denmark's history. Written and produced by Danish historian and tour guide Rune Edberg. This podcast features excerpts from Rune Edberg's book Know Your Dane, Unlocking the Secrets to the Danish Mentality, as well as stories from his two walking tours, World War II and Copenhagen, and Copenhagen's Dark History Walk. It is possible to book a spot on these tours on the website copentel.com. On this episode. It was only after the war in 1864 that the new Danish national identity began to be constructed. Previously, the group identity was directed towards one's local community. If you were from the Aalborg region, Then this area was the home country, more so than the country as a whole. The reason for this may be due to several factors, but one of the main reasons was the poor transport conditions. The population was isolated and therefore more focused on their communities than the nation as a whole. Throughout the 1800s, Denmark lost a large amount of land and a large part of the kingdom's population. Therefore, after having been left as a small, poor, and vulnerable country in one of Europe's culturally outlying areas, Denmark sought to rebuild and reinvent itself. But, how does a population move on after such major historical change? The Danish kings and authorities looked to ancient times, historical triumphs, and myths. As Saxo did hundreds of years earlier, the mission was to create a new Danish identity for the remaining citizens in the small, rural areas of Jutland and the islands, whose ethnic origin now consisted primarily of Danes, as well as the distant colonies in the North Atlantic and the Caribbean. Since the colonies did not play a big role in the general public's consciousness, the royal house and the authorities instead chose to focus on a single narrative. That would bind the country's smaller areas together. Some ritual elements were used, such as a common flag, emphasizing the common language, cultural norms and traditions, and historical tales linked to the Danish landscape. To propagate this overall narrative to the people, artists, such as writers, musicians, and painters, were called together with historians. Denmark's glorious past with the Vikings and the Danish kings was emphasized in relation to the many wars the nation had with neighboring countries like Sweden and Prussia. These countries were further made out to be merciless aggressors, who had attacked the frightened little country of Denmark and only one because of their vast numbers of people and supplies, as well as their ruthless behavior. During this period, the loss of Norway was especially devastating, as it meant a major loss of self-awareness, industry, population, and a large country area with impressive mountains and fjords. Therefore, the focus was on turning the negative into a positive. The flat Danish landscape, with its fields and lack of industrialization, was idealized and highlighted in paintings of green fields, blue skies, and big, fat, grazing cows. Even though these paintings did not give a true and fair view of the hard-working Danish farmers, they nevertheless helped create an overall narrative of a small, rich, and idyllic country that took pride in its beautiful landscape. This construction of a Danish identity, dating back 150 years, still resonates in the present day as it is these same elements and narratives that form the basis of the official modern Danish national identity. A country bound together by a common language, cultural festivals, and traditions, as well as a national flag. But it is also an identity not every Dane feels comfortable or at home with. In the capital region and the larger cities, it is seen as a narrow, xenophobic, and excluding way of defining a group identity for a whole country's population. It is especially hard for Danish citizens born from parents with another nationality and culture when some choose to turn their back on the broader definition of the Danish national identity. The gates to the dark history of Copenhagen are open once again. On this walking tour, we will take a journey back in time to some of the most dramatic, tragic, and dark events in the Danish capital's history. In the company of our historian Rune Edberg, we will visit the central locations in the old medieval part of the city centre. From Swedish besieges and British bombardments, to witch burnings, and executions, Copenhagen was a much smaller city than today, enclosed and claustrophobic behind high city walls. 
and with sparse and primitive sanitary conditions, which became a threat to its inhabitants. When the plague epidemic hit in 1711, killing one-third of Copenhagen's inhabitants. The dark part of Copenhagen's history includes poverty and poor housing, which played its part in the bad living conditions of the majority of the population. Other dramatic stories and events told on this tour include the cholera epidemic of 1853, and the city fires of 1728 and 1795, which have played a central part in shaping the current look and architecture of Copenhagen's city centre. We will also pass some of the Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard's old addresses, and the place where the world-famous Danish brewery, Carlsberg, was founded. So, book your spot on the tour now on copentel.com. Denmark versus Fox News. Denmark came into focus when the American news channel, Fox News, compared Denmark and the Danish Welfare Society with the economic and social crisis in Venezuela during a broadcast that aired in August 2018. The host of the program, Trish Reagan, stated that Danes did not work very hard, and they were lazy and untrained. This led to great distress and anger in Denmark, wherein the government publicly contested this comparison. The Danish finance minister, Christian Jensen, quickly went to Twitter, where he demonstrated the economic and educational differences between Denmark and the United States. Denmark was 11 places ahead of the United States on the OECD's list of employment rates among the population. Additionally, Denmark was at the top of the list for work-life balance, wherein Denmark was number 12 in the world and Venezuela was number 179. The Danish Social Democrats representative made a quick response via a YouTube video rejecting all of Reagan's claims. That has since become a viral hit in Denmark. Book a spot on Copentel's World War II walking tour in Copenhagen. Take a journey back to the 1940s, when the Nazi German forces had occupied the Danish capital. On this guided walking tour we will visit the city district of Vesterbro and the city center of Copenhagen. In the company of our historian Rune Edberg, who is specialized in the Second World War and the German occupation of Denmark 1940-1945, you will have the unique opportunity to visit some of the central places of the Danish freedom struggle during the Second World War. You'll become acquainted with the central themes and paradoxes of the period. Danes in the resistance movement and Danes in German service which came to violent expression through assassinations and bomb attacks that divided the Danish population during the five long years from 1940 to 1945. We will stop outside at some of Copenhagen's most central locations and sites from the Second World War. This includes the former Gestapo headquarters at Shellhuset, where we will hear the story of the British bombing of the building on the 21st of March 1945 and its consequences. We will also visit the place where the resistance group Holger Dansk was founded and come past the dreaded addresses from which Hitler's henchmen ruled Denmark with an iron hand. You can book your spot on Copentel.com. You have been listening to Copentel, a podcast about Copenhagen and Denmark's history. Written and produced by Danish historian and tour guide Rune Edberg. This podcast features excerpts from Rune Edberg's book Know Your Dane, Unlocking the Secrets to the Danish Mentality, as well as stories from his two walking tours, World War II and Copenhagen, and Copenhagen's Dark History Walk. It is possible to book a spot on these tours on the website copentel.com.